Does your gaming PC look like you just bought it from an alleyway on Craigslist? Well, fear not, because I'll be going over some pretty cool tech under $50 that can help spice up your PC, whether that's to improve the aesthetics or to add a bit of functionality. I'm also gonna be giving away the tech you see in this video to 10 lucky subscribers, thanks to today's sponsor, Whatnot. To enter, all you have to do is download the Whatnot app using my link down below and spend some or all of your $15 free credit. Whatnot is an app where you can buy and sell literally anything. Obviously, you guys know I'm into tech and tools, but I was surprised to see that Whatnot also has Pokemon cards, coins, designer bags, even the boo-boos and more. I was literally in the electronics category the other day and I saw people buying smartwatches for like 50% off of retail prices. So scan the QR code on the screen or just click my link below to download Whatnot and you can get $15 off your first purchase anywhere in the app. To enter the giveaway, just sign up to Whatnot using my link and make sure to spend some or all of your free $15 to enter the giveaway. To enter for free, you can just simply comment what your Whatnot username is below. But why not spend your $15 free credit to double your chances of winning? Now, you guys don't have to do all that if you don't want to. If you just want to enter for free, all you have to do is leave your Whatnot username down below in the comment section. But you do get $15 free credit, so why not use it and double your chances of winning? Now, if we somehow hit 2,000 total entries for the giveaway, then I will double the giveaway prizes. So instead of 10, I will select 20 winners. All right, kicking off the episode, we have this really cool remote PC power switch. I'm sure some of you guys remember, I used to have this installed underneath my desk at my setup, but I do have two daughters and sometimes, and even purposely, they would come and turn off my PC and it would get very annoying sometimes. So I decided to move it right behind my main monitor so it's hidden from plain sight and only I can reach it. This is also perfect for people that have disabilities if they have difficulty reaching their PC, if it's really high up somewhere or even on the ground and they have difficulty bending over. It's very easy to set up. You just plug in all three of the cables into the JFP1 connector of your motherboard, which is usually located on the bottom right. This is what the connection should look like if you did it correctly. Now, if you still wanna use the physical power button on the case in tandem with the power switch, then you could use the included cable extension to supply power to both. Now, it does come equipped with a blue switch, so you get that satisfying clicking sound when pressed. But if you don't like the keycap, you can replace it with your favorite one. Oh, and it also lights up, which is pretty cool. The cable is 65 inches in length, so you can comfortably put this anywhere you want. And I think it's one of the most useful things you can buy for your setup if your PC is placed further away from you. Now, if you wanna take it to the next level, you can go full on wireless with this, a remote switch that has a more sturdier and premium build that can reach your PC up to 20 meters. It does come with a pre-installed battery, which is supposed to last up to one year of use. However, it's very easy to replace. Just remove the two X screws in the back and pop off the lid to get access to the small battery. But what I like most about this switch is that the installation is much easier. You just plug in the female power switch cable into the JFP1 header and the female power switch from your case gets plugged into the male end. Then grab the USB 2 cable and plug that into your motherboard's USB header. The nice thing is that it doesn't technically use up any of your headers because in return, it gives you one female extension to use to plug in your other devices. Now there is one setting you have to change in the BIOS and that is the USB power setting. To access that, just simply restart your PC and go into the BIOS. Then navigate to your advanced settings and locate the ACPI or USB power menu and set the USB device power to enabled or always on. Then just save and restart your PC and you can now power it on or off using a click of a button. Okay, we all know about cable extensions at this point and how much of an impact it has on your PC's appearance. But what I'm about to show you is gonna take that to the next level. Introducing the Hydrus cables. Wow. I'm sure most of you guys have seen these on a few PC builds already on the channel, like the O11D Mini V2 and the more recent subscriber PC build. The 24 pin Hydrus cable is an extension that plugs into your already existing 24 pin cable and in my opinion provides a much cleaner, sleek and minimalistic aesthetic with some subtle RGB accents that can be controlled with the motherboard's RGB software. You can also use third party RGB software like Signal RGB. Now the 16 pin cable is pretty much the same thing but is designed mainly for your Nvidia 40 series or 50 series card. However, and this is very important, this is not an extension 
like the 24 pin cable. This is a male to male connection and this plugs into your power supply's female 16 pin socket. This is going to replace your already existing 12 VH power cable from the power supply. So in other words, if your power supply doesn't have a female 16 pin 12 VH power socket, you can't use this cable. The 16 pin Hydros cable is compatible with all 40 series and 50 series cards up to an RTX 5080 and a 5080 Super. It is not compatible with the 5090. However, with that said, I did speak to the manufacturer directly and they told me they're working on a cable specifically for the RTX 5090 and they're expecting to release it sometime later this year or early next year. But once the cable is available, we will sell it on our store as well. Now, one thing to keep in mind when buying these cables is that there are two different variations, type A and type B. Type A has the clip on the bottom and type B has the clip on the top. So make sure to inspect your graphics card's 600 watt connector and see which version of the cable you need. It's also worth noting which direction you want to route the cable. For example, if we take a look at this Astral 5090, we can see the clip is on the top. So if we want to route the cable underneath the GPU, we would go with a type B version. But if we want to go over the GPU, then we would need a type A instead. Both the 24 pin and the 16 pin cables come with a five volt, three pin cable extension that needs to be plugged into the opposite end of the Hydra's cable, which by the way, remains hidden behind your PC. You're not gonna see this from the front. And the other end of the ARGB cable plugs into your motherboard's five volt, three pin ARGB header. Now to control the lights, you can use your motherboard's RGB software or any third party software like Signal RGB or Open RGB to control the lights. But yeah, these cables are amazing. They really do clean up the look of your PC and they're perfect for mini ITX builds as well since the cables are thinner and more flexible. So you can get in those harder to reach places. Now in terms of build quality, underneath the PVC soft line wrap are 18 AWG cables with copper wire core and brass tin plated terminals, which are resistant to high voltage and high temps. So you are getting quality cables here that won't fry your system. The only downside is the price. You can expect to pay up to $35 per cable, which is pretty steep, especially considering you can get a full set of cable extensions for much less than that. But if you're going for that clean and minimal look, unfortunately, there is nothing else out there quite like this. I think we can all agree at this point that adding monitors or extra screens inside of your PC is cool and very popular. Hell, I've even done a few myself in the past few subscriber builds. I would honestly say that it's a fantastic way of not only filling in the empty space near the back of your case, but also adding some functionality. The extra display can double as a secondary monitor where you can upload video wallpapers for purely aesthetic purposes, or you can convert the monitor into a sensor panel, which is also another common thing a lot of people do. Now I've gone through a lot, and I mean a lot of different monitors in the past, and I've quickly learned that most of them are garbage. My personal pick lately has been this one from June Electron, which is the same one I used in a PC build for a popular NFL player, which I only uploaded on Instagram, by the way. This video does not exist on my YouTube. The reason why I like this one so much is because it's got a cleaner design. The ports are all on one side, and it has a 1024 by 600 resolution for only 36 bucks. I also found this exact model to fit in the rear exhaust fan location of most cases. Now, most of the secondary monitors stick out like a sore thumb, especially if you're installing it in a white case. That's where this 3D printed cover comes in handy. The monitor slides right inside the case, leaving the ports open for you to plug in the cables. And the cutouts in the back are large enough to fit in magnets that attach to the rear of your case, preventing it from tipping over. However, your case will need a little shelf above the PCI brackets for the monitor to sit on. Luckily, a lot of cases do have this, but if your case doesn't have something to stop the monitor from sliding down, then you can't use this method. Also, if your case doesn't have a pass-through grommet near the back for the cables, then you would have to route the cables through the bottom of the motherboard and out from the bottom PCI brackets. That way you can plug them into the back of the motherboard. The USB cable plugs into any of the available USB ports, and the HDMI cable plugs into the back of your graphics card. Then once you boot into your desktop, right click and go into the display settings, 
Over here, you want to make sure to select the second monitor on the top, then scroll down and set the resolution. After that, scroll down and switch the display orientation to portrait flipped. Now, if your taskbar shows up on the second monitor, I would strongly recommend hiding it. Just right click on your main taskbar, go into the taskbar settings, then locate the taskbar behaviors tab near the bottom and select the option that removes the taskbar from all of your extra displays. This simply provides a cleaner view of your monitor, so using a video wallpaper would look the best. Aside from a video wallpaper, you can also set up a sensor panel. Sensor panels can be completely customized from scratch using the IDA64 software, or you can download templates that have already been made from the internet, or Etsy, which is where I got mine. Just simply download the template, load up IDA64, and import the sensor panel skin and you're good to go. You can change the text to anything you like or modify the elements to show any harder info you want. Just be mindful of the resolution of the sensor panel and the resolution of the monitor. Otherwise, you will end up with some empty space like I did. But anyways, links to the monitor, the 3D print file, the magnets, even the sensor panel will be all posted down below. And for those of you who don't own a 3D printer, we are strongly considering selling the case with the magnets as a package deal with free shipping on our Etsy store. So if that's available, you can find the link to that down below as well. Collecting figurines have always been an ever-growing hobby. We have seen tons of setups on Setup Wars proudly displaying their collections. But what if you can expand your hobby into your PC? I mean, most of the time, people just place the figurines on top of their GPUs or any flat surface in their case. But what if you don't have any flat surface in your case? Well then, let me introduce you to the RGB floating shelf. This little guy screws onto your existing 120 millimeter fan and provides a cool little platform to display your favorite uh, collectibles. Yeah, yeah, the design of the shelf is actually well thought out. It mounts to the front two screw holes of the fans, and then you slide on the top piece which covers the screw holes, and then you plug in the cable into the five volt ARGB header of the motherboard, and you can actually control it using the motherboard software or third party RGB apps. Now, I do have to go on record and say that the RGB lighting isn't the brightest, but it's still bright enough to where you can clearly see it. Also, the lights are not evenly diffused. There are some hot spots and the corners are slightly dimmer, but overall, it's not bad. It does seem like it uses a cheap RGB strip from China and a thin layer of frosted acrylic to help with the diffusion. But overall, I would say it does the job well. And personally, I think it's a neat little invention to display some of your collectibles in the PC while adding to its aesthetic. They do sell these shelves in white and black with different sizes. So if you guys are planning on buying some, make sure to check measurements inside your case before you pull the trigger. This little guy is the perfect little companion for all enthusiasts out there. Whether you are an overclocker, hardware reviewer, or a gamer who just wants to simply monitor their GPU stats in real time. The Thermal Grizzly WireView is a measuring device that monitors your GPU's power draw in watts, average consumption, and total usage. It's got a cute little built-in OLED screen that shows the stats in real time with built-in memory, so you can actually store the values for recording measurements. You simply plug in one end into the GPU power socket, and the other end goes into the 12VH power cable, which actually provides a cleaner cable path as a bonus. There's a button on the side that helps you navigate the menu, and holding it down basically acts as a select button. This is actually very popular with people that own high-end cards, like an RTX 5090, for example, simply due to the fact that it provides extra peace of mind. With the whole cables and connectors melting fiasco, this basically adds a layer of confidence. You can quickly glance over and see how many watts your card is pulling. And if you see an unusual number, you can quickly react before catastrophe. Now this one specifically is the 12VH power version, and this only works with RTX 40 series and 50 series cards. However, they do sell PCI versions as well, up to triple eight pins. But before you buy one, make sure to inspect your GPU and make a note of the connector's orientation. That way you don't buy the wrong version. I just wish they made one in white for obvious reasons, but it is what it is. I still think it's a very useful piece of tech to have in your PC just for some extra peace of mind. Is it just me or is it really annoying when you buy some really nice RGB fans to install inside your PC 
only to find out that your motherboard doesn't have a single ARGB fan header. This is unfortunately a very common occurrence in a lot of the lower end builds, but luckily there is a simple solution to that, an ARGB controller. This one from Ergu does the job, and I gotta say, it does it very well. It has a total of 16 5 volt 3 pin ARGB headers. We got eight on each side, allowing you to technically plug in up to 16 fans on a single controller. The SATA cable provides power to the device, and this simply plugs into the female SATA cable from your power supply, and the USB cable goes into your motherboard's USB header for data transfer. The controller box is actually compatible with Signal RGB. In fact, it was designed specifically to work with this software. And it works really well, especially since you can sync all the lights together. Now with all the extra devices you plug into your PC, you most likely will run out of USB 2 headers on your motherboard. Well, luckily there's a simple solution to that as well. A USB header adapter. But not all of them are the same. Some of them might split the header into two, or maybe even four, but you lose power when that's done. And with power hungry devices like Lee and Lee's wireless fans, the USB adapter simply won't have enough juice to properly supply power to those devices, which is why it's recommended to buy one with SATA power. This will ensure your devices get the power it needs to properly function. This one plugs into one USB header on your motherboard, but in return gives you three extra USB headers to use for all of your other devices. As always guys, don't forget to download Whatnot using my link down below to get $15 off your next purchase and also enter for a chance to win one of these awesome products from today's video. Just make sure to spend some or all of your $15 credit or leave your Whatnot username down below. But like I mentioned before, I recommend doing both to double your chances of winning. But as always, links to everything will be dropped down below if you guys want to check it out. Consider tossing a like for more cool tech videos like this and I'll see you very soon in the next one.